situation you're in? Uh, yeah. yeah, please. That, that makes me think a lot about, I actually put a Facebook rant on one of my friends' yeah. this week, but uh, I hear um, a dad and his kids talk about it. Right, like we are listening to her, we're not like. Mm -hmm. And people are yeah. like, oh, she's terrible, she's bad. She's yeah. Like, yeah. And I'm like, how long have, has everyone complained about not having a real woman in the media, the real right. yeah. And as soon as we get her, we, we just, we crucify her. Just get yeah, right, just jump into her. But the same as Kathy Couric, you know her? When she became the host of CBS, was it the six o'clock news? People were criticizing her makeup and her dress, but no one criticizes the makeup and the coats of men. Like, why the double standard? Like, hello, just because she's a woman, do you have to do this? Crucifying the woman on TV? So people, and I have women friends in the office to say, oh yeah, look at her, really? You know, like, is she there for her makeup? Is she a model or is she a newscaster? Right? I, I'm not her fan. I'm just saying the fact that you are a woman, so much crucifixion on a daily basis, being a woman. Okay, she's, this is the champion. Okay, it was the BBC presenter who said this, no? She wasn't a looker. If you go online because on BBC.com, you can write your comments. All the negative comments, like she's a B, why did she win? Like, she, they say all kinds of things not related to the sport. Okay, it's, it's awful. And you know Bill Maher, and this is the problem with men. So he would say, I'm tired of politician being a medical expert on the V word. I want to hear the gynecologist talk about the national debt. Except men always decide the fate of women, the, the destiny of women. Can women have a dialogue about their bodies? Should men decide on the woman's body? Well, that's what they're trying to do now. Yeah. Well, why aren't you out in the street protesting? <laughs> good point. Yeah, good point. Good point. The same thing. So the FBI defines rape as penetration, no matter how slight, of the V, with any object without the consent of the victim. But then, now we will, there will be requirement put a metal probe on a woman, part of the law in some states, okay, again, okay. Problem with men, say pro-life, like, is it your V? Well, why, why do men always have to make the decision for women? Think about it. Okay, who knows Dr. Juanita Johnson Bailey? When I took this course, Dr. Lisa Baumgartner taught this course, we had to read the writings of uh, Juanita Johnson Bailey. She was the advisor of, you know Lisa Baumgartner? You will, if you don't. Oh, maybe not, but you'll read her articles. In, you're not reading her book? Oh, I caught you all, you're not reading her book. <laughs> Duh, she's one of the co-authors of the database. Caught, all of you. <laughs> okay, and uh, she was saying that you have two sets of professors talking about the same thing, gender, race, ethnicity, class, and the divide in our society. If it's a colored person, or a woman, or both, that's multiple minority complex, a woman and then of color, compared to a male professor, students complain. This is a study that she did. People would say, oh, this African-American female teacher, she's so racist and biased, she always talks about race and inequality. But if it's a male professor, white, talks about, my goodness, I have the best professor, he's so cool, he talks about gender and ethnicity. The same topic, but different ideology. People expect men to be good, this is so bad. And women, why are you talking about color, ethnicity, and gender? She did a study and proved the same two faculty using the same curriculum and content got different reaction. So, does she consider, does she consider a male professor of color? Or? I don't remember if she did. Yeah. Her focus is critical race feminist theory. That's her contribution. Okay, there's the critical theory, there's the critical feminist theory, there's the critical race theory, she combined them all. So, I don't remember, and I saw her in a conference, she gave the keynote address, so she's a very powerful speaker. 
to continue with that. Therefore, when it comes to evaluation, the woman and people of color and women of color get bad rap. And the male get good evaluation, maybe white male. So you, it's hard to explain, I'm not a woman, I cannot, how to be a woman and then to go through such oppression. See, I, can, I know color, you know? Last time I had been, you know, shout hurled, uh, racist and offensive uh, invective was just uh, two days ago. I was crossing a normal road. It's color, I didn't do anything. But woman of color, that's double. I can't, I don't, I don't know, okay? So it's hard to understand the psychology, psychology of people from different backgrounds. So that's the second thing. And this is from uh, just uh, July 5th. It said the worst places for women's health are in these places. In terms of reproductive rights, women's health rights, and so on. Okay, yeah. And oftentimes when we think of women, say, yeah, but is she the sister of, or mother of, or daughter of? Like, excuse me, can't you be she, period? Okay, it's oftentimes like this. Unfortunately, even in politics, people would say, well, in Sri Lanka, in Bangladesh, in the Philippines, in uh, Pakistan, in India, we have female prime minister and president. Yeah, but they were the wife of, or uh, the daughter of, their slain husband or slain father. That's, that's the trend. So it's not because they're known for themselves, it's because they were the daughter or wife of Ed Corazon Aquino, let's say from the Philippines. She was the wife of. And uh, Gloria Macapaga, she was the daughter of a former president. And et cetera, et cetera. It's not because they are powerful by themselves, but because they're attached to certain people, except the big O, right? kind of rarity. Okay. Now, so therefore, because of all of these problems, we really need to include gender when we talk, when we do things, etc., etc. And women say, we can do it. Okay, so objectives, we'll deal with two things. One is, we'll look at the role of women play in adult education. And we'll have some case studies. I gave some pop culture already. Adele, thank you. And so on. And current events and post-colonial, POCO, design post-colonial. Well, I, I'm originally from the Philippines. The U.S. colonized the Philippines for about a few years. <laughs> 40, 50 years. And Spain, 300 years. So I, I give you uh, the post-colonial so two questions, so what are the different ideologies behind feminism? Okay, and what are the different historical ways? So, what are the, so this is my bias, my positionality. If you read your book, it's very important for feminist discourse to say what are your positionalities. So because I am Chinese, Filipino, I'm Asian, post-colonial, I have biases in presenting the materials that you will see today based on my positionality. Okay? I've written many papers, academic papers, Dr. Hor had mentioned, on gender with Mina. They're all students of Dr. Hor, by the way. Uh, Mina Razvi, we wrote about Hinduism and South Asia and Pakistan with Maimuna, uh, feminism in Mali, in African context, and Muslim countries with Flavia, um, Catholic Christian women in Latin America, in Brazil, with Oni and Karzon, uh, with women, gender, role of Islam in the Middle East, in Palestine, and Eric, uh, also uh, women in Jordan, in the Middle East, in, uh, in Muslim countries, so all of them were Dr. Horace students. Okay, blame him that I got involved in uh, feminism. I mean it in a good way. Okay, so there are two words. You use sex and gender, they're very different. When you say sex, it's the biology, okay? Well, we're told how many sexes are there? How many? 
Yeah, we're told too, but if you dig deeper in medical books, you're about six. There's hermaphrodite, there's aphrodite, there's erm, and so on. And they are scientific and they're real. Okay? So, but we all we know too, it's the dominant discourse of having two sexes. And in some courses on gender and feminism, you will dig deeper and find there are five or six sexes, biological and real. Like having fully developed uh, sexual organs in one person, or one a little more than the other, etc., etc. And some have both, etc. Gender is the role that we play. It's not directly related to sex alone. Okay, if you say sex, okay, you have that male thing, then you are a man. That's sex. If you have that female thing, you're a woman. But gender says, well, if you are a woman, and in a country in the 1800s, in uh, Western Europe, you're expected to act like this, and to behave like this, to talk like this. But if you're the same, uh, let's say, European woman in the 1900s, you're expected to wear like this, to act like this, to talk like this. So it's the social role that we play. That's gender. There's a difference between gender and sex. Okay. From the etymology dictionary, uh, who used the word historically, the word feminism? It was from France, 1837. It's the uh, advocacy of women's rights, 1895. So ism is the belief according to which femme women that we have to put emphasis on the woman. So it's the belief according to which women is central in our understanding. And then there are two words too which are related, kind of similar but not. So it depends on how you look at them, pedagogy and andragogy. You must have encountered both of them already? Yeah. Okay, what's pedagogy again? Education, children, and andragogy of uh, adults, yeah. So technically, uh, when you're talking of pedagogy, it's focusing on the child, okay? But it's also taken to mean generically just education, teaching and learning. So there are two definitions of pedagogy. Okay? One, if you look at the etymology of the word, it focuses on the child alone. But then, when it's used in this book, feminist pedagogy, it does not mean the female child. It means education in general. That's the second use of the term. But then there's more appropriate word for adults. That's andragogy, from uh, two Greek words, adults, and leading the adult. Okay, so when you hear the words, be careful when you say, you know, there are certain assumptions when you deal with Andragogy. Well, adults learn differently from children. In, in essence, that's what it means, right? They'll come up in your final exam. Don't worry. It did when I took the class. <laughs> okay. I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay, so pedagogy can mean two things. One in general, education. The other, specifically, it's children's education. Okay, but here, when we use feminist pedagogy, it just means in general the ways uh, women learn and the way we teach. Now, okay, according to Jürgen Habermas, is with a critical school from Germany, and Dr. Horace is an expert who will give talk in different parts of the world, in Germany, in Mexico, about Habermas. 